Good morning, Caitlin. Hello. Gabby. It's freezing in here. It's cold. So our first guest this morning from the University of Iowa, Caitlin Clark, Gabby Marshall. Again, please raise your hand with a question and uh, direct it to either of the student athletes, and we'll go ahead and get started. We'll go to Scott in the back. Hello, Scott Docterman with The Athletic. This question's for Caitlin. Caitlin, is, who is the one player that maybe had the most influence in the way you play basketball, and why? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, honestly, like I, would, I grew up watching a lot of different players. Um, I always had basketball on, no matter what level it was. And honestly, like the two biggest people that I looked up to were two of my cousins. My cousin ended up playing at Creighton. Uh, for a while. Her name was Audrey Faber. She played at Dowling and like I always idolized her and she could score the ball well. She could shoot the ball. Um, so I would say like the closest person to me was probably her. But other than that, like Maya Moore, like I love the way she played basketball. Um, you know, Sabrina when I was in high school, like that was always who I had on. I always watched Oregon. I always watched Sabrina and the way she played the game. Um, but I was just somebody that loved basketball no matter who it was. Like I always had the TV on, whether it was men's, whether it was women's, whether it was the WNBA, NBA, like I always loved watching the game. So um, I feel like it was a, a lot of different players, honestly. Howie Kassoy, New York Post. Caitlin, kind of going off of that, when you got older, when maybe you're in high school or a freshman, like, or maybe in Team USA, were there any players you ever stepped on the floor with where you're like, oh, wow, I'm playing with this person, or you kind of had gotten used to watching them and then it became <laughs> real? Yeah, I feel like it was kind of like that way whenever I was playing USA basketball. Like all those players are really, really talented and – I would say especially when I was in high school still and I was on the U19 team at the time and Coach Walls was our coach, Coach Close was our coach, and um, like Ryan Howard was on the team, Nas Hillman was on the team, Aaliyah Boston was on the team. Like it was just like I came off the bench. Like it was just a loaded roster of players. Paige was on the team, Haley Van Lith was on the team. Like all these players that you look around and are having so much success, whether they're either now in the WNBA, Ryan was obviously rookie of the year, same with Aaliyah. And, um, I think it's that, like I always like loved being surrounded by really great players and I always knew how great they were when I got to play with them, but also at the same time, like I knew I could hold my own, but also it showed me a lot of ways that I could get better and um, whenever I had those experiences, they were really special. Jeff? Uh, Jeff Lander, Cedar Rapids Gazette. Either of the players, just uh, your perceptions of Holy Cross uh, from watching them last night. Yeah, I think they've got a couple pretty good shooters from the outside, and they're just a good, solid team. We'll know, we know they're going to give it their all um, and give us their best shot, so I think it's important for us to guard that three-point line and just play good, solid defense. And honestly, don't do anything we've not, we haven't done all year and just play Iowa basketball and get better. Dennis. Dennis Dodd, CBS Sports, for both players. Caitlin, how have you managed all this, just the entire thing? And I'd like that perspective from Gabby, too, because, um, you know, in a lot of ways, you guys are playing in the shadow, I guess, if nothing else. Yeah, I think it's been, it's been a journey, and it's honestly gone really fast. And obviously, this last year has been really crazy. My life has been really crazy. All of our lives have been crazy. But... I don't know, like my main goal, my main focus is basketball and school and getting my degree. And that's where I spend all of my time doing that. And um, it's been nice. Like I'm close to finishing my degree. So a lot of my stuff is online this semester. And um, just getting to enjoy these last few months of basketball with my best friends has been really, really fun for myself. And I guess that's what the thing where I find kind of peace in is like, I don't feel like this is a job. I don't feel like I have to go out there and score 40 points a night. Like I just go out there and have fun. And 
you know, at the same time, I know I'm. this is a team sport. I have four other people on the court with me at the same time, and I can rely on them. And I'm going to need them if we want to reach our goals in March. It can't just be me. And they've been playing amazing basketball too. So, um, yeah, I think – I don't know. I feel like we still act the same way. We still – I don't know, are the same team. We have the same culture that we've always had since I stepped on the court when I was a freshman. And um, I think like that just speaks to who we are. And th that's the reason we've had success is because that's how we approach every single day. Yeah, I would just say, obviously, she has a lot of attention on her all the time. And that can bring a lot of pressure. But I think she handles it better than anyone I've ever met. Um, I know if it was me, it'd be a lot on me. So um, I give her props for that. And I think she just comes in every day, every practice, and just you can just tell how much she loves her teammates and how much she loves her coaches and how much she just loves the game. And so I think that just radiates through everything that she does. And I mean, there's no, no one more deserving than her of everything that she's accomplished. Kyle Hughesman, Hawkeye Report. Question for both of you guys. This is this is the last time for you guys that you get to go through an NCAA tournament. You're both moving on from Iowa after this year. What's the the mood like for you guys, knowing that you know it's different from last year, where you come in, you know, there's another year, but this is this is the last time you get to to try to make a run in the NCAA tournament. Honestly, like I was, I would say for myself, and I don't know if this is the same for Gab. Like it doesn't really feel like this is like the end for us. I feel like that's not really how we're approaching it. I feel like we're kind of approaching it like this is very businesslike. This is like we're here to win. We're here to get back to the Final Four. Um, I feel like if you approach it in a way of, you know, this is the end, this is our last time playing on our home court, this is our last time hosting, like you can get too caught up in the emotions of it and sure, you're going to feel the emotions at some point, that's just how it's going to go, but um, I think just approaching it in like a business-like manner and going 1-0 every single day is always what Coach Bluter says, I think that's the biggest thing, at least for myself, is, you know, I understand we're really only guaranteed one more game from here on out, but you know, I think just going out there and having fun and approaching it like you always do, that's what's going to bring you success, and that's what brought us success last year. So you can't be too worried about when it's going to end or how it's going to end. You just got to enjoy the moments and live in the moments and, you know, don't let them pass you by. Gabby, do you want to take that too? Yeah, I would say, obviously, I agree with everything she said, but at the same time, like, we know this is our last tournament as well, and I think that just brings an extra motivation for the three of us. And um, it, boy, Molly, <laughs> but um, so I, I think just knowing that this is the last time we'll go through this together as a team, and just make the most of it, give it our all every night we're out there. Go ahead, Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Um, so for both of you, you enter this tournament as a number one seed. Mm -hmm. Does that create any higher expectations or any additional pressure for you? No, I would say whether we're a one seed, whether we're a ten seed, it doesn't matter. I feel like this team would have the same expectations of ourselves and what we're capable of. I think everybody in our locker room knows what we're capable of. And um, to be honest, I don't think seeding really matters. It is what it is. That's your draw. It doesn't matter if you have a one by your name. It doesn't matter if you have a nine by your name. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. You got to go come and show up and play every single night. And. I think our group has great perspective on that. Obviously, our, my sophomore year and a lot of the girls on the team experienced this too. Like, we got upset by a 10 seed on our home court. So, um, you know, anybody can be beat on any given day. That's just how this tournament works. That's why this tournament is so fun. Um, but also, you can beat anybody too. Um, and that's where you can find a lot of success. And that's what we did last year. And so I think our, our team having that experience is the biggest thing and understanding, you know, how this tournament works. Um, is, is good and I, I, like more than anything, I think just the experience is something we need to lean on. Not everything's gonna be perfect and um, it's how you respond to those moments. It's gonna lead you to a win. Gabby, go ahead. I think she said it perfectly. <laughs> <clears throat> Further questions? Anyone else? <clears throat> All right, thank you. Sweet. Our next uh, speaker will be Coach Lisa Bluter.
Hey, coach. Bring you back, huh? Yeah, yeah. How are you, buddy? Oh, issues getting this way. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, hi. <clears throat> Okay, just again, a couple things to go over before we start the interviews. Um, please make sure your cell phones are silenced. No cell phone video, flash photography, or video cameras are allowed in the press conference. Media may access press conference video at the NCAA Digital Workroom site. Uh, please raise your hand when you have a question for Coach. Please identify yourself by both name and affiliation. And Tom will come around with the microphone. Um, with your, so you can hear, hear your questions. With that, welcome Coach Lisa Bluter of the Iowa Hawkeyes and take, start beginning our taking questions. Kyle Huseman, Hawkeye Report. Um, you don't always get to see the team that you're gonna play, you know, play in person the, a couple days before. What were your thoughts on, on Holy Cross last night um, and what do you see as, as some challenges in facing them? Yeah, Kyle, I think that's exactly right. You usually don't get to see somebody live, especially in your home court, uh, before you're going to play them in the NCAA tournament. So I think we use that to our advantage. Our team was there um, before we went and started our scouting report. Um, obviously, their three-point shooting is really good. In the last five games, they're shooting over 38% from three. Last night, they shot the three ball really well, especially Kara McCormick. And so we definitely have to have really good three-point defense. Steve Silverman, Ivy Hoops Online. Coach, um, you didn't know who you were going to play until last night, so how were you preparing prior to last night, earlier in the week, for example? We prepared for both. Um, we had scouting reports done on both. We had films done on both, and so we were ready for either team, and so that was not really an issue. For the questions? Coach, I'll throw this one in there. Oh, Kyle's got one. Oh, no, is go that ahead, okay? Kyle. I was just going to ask, um, you're used to this, but your team has a break between the tour conference tournament and the NCAA. How has that break been for your team this year? It's been really welcomed as far as, you know, we were exhausted after playing in the Big Ten tournament and playing three games in less than 48 hours. Um, so it took us a while to get our feet back underneath us, uh, mentally and physically. But now it seems like it's been forever. This week has is, is really been dragging on a little bit. We were hoping we were going to play today. But now with the snowstorm, maybe it's a good thing we didn't play today. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a situation where we're ready to play. It, it's been a long time. It'll be almost two weeks since we've played, and we are ready to go. Kyle. Mentioned the other day that, that Molly Davis wasn't necessarily um, as far along as you had hoped for. Just curious on your update on her. And then uh, if she isn't able to go, how important was being able to play with Sita Fulter in the lineup last week and, and have you know three games without Molly Davis in the lineup? Yeah, you're right, Kyle. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen Molly today. Um, I don't anticipate her playing on Saturday. Um, but hopefully by Monday we can get some time from her, um, if we can get to Monday, that is. Um, but I think having Sid play three games that helped the team have confidence in her in that position and her, you know, Sid actually really having a lot of confidence in herself, knowing that she can do it. I've always said I think Sid was the sixth player of the year in this Big Ten, and I think she proved it getting on the all-tournament team in the Big Ten tournament. Um, it's, I have no doubt that Sid can do a great job for us. And it was really good to have her play in those three and a half, three and three quarters games that were successful for us beforehand. Coach, a lot of folks have talked about how your team uh, got a pretty hard draw in the bracket this year. Do you want to comment on that at all, or are you just looking at one game at a time at this point? That's absolutely what we're doing. We're looking at one game at a time. Uh, to me, this is a two-game tournament this week, um, and then next week's a two-game tournament. That's how we kind of look at it. We break it into segments, and I'm not even looking up, you know, next week. I I'm not we're even concerned about that. I'm concerned about Holy Cross right now, and then if we can get by them that next game. So it's, it's not of concern to me. Coach, I'll throw one more in there. Uh, Holy Cross was in the NCAA tournament last year. <laughs> They've been through the routine, and they're a senior led team, does that uh, throw more, more concern as opposed to playing a young team? 
I mean, anytime a team has experience, I think that you can draw upon, it's good. Um, I think Maureen has done a great job. I, I, I am really impressed with her. I'm impressed with her team. Um, it doesn't surprise me because, you know, having somebody that played at Marist and uh, under Red Fox there, I mean, he's, he was a great coach. And she, so she learned from a really good person. And so they're very fundamentally sound. I mean, they don't turn the ball over. Um, they shoot the three really well. They really stick to their system. Um, and, and so I, I again, I'm, I'm very impressed with her and what she's done with Holy Cross in four years. Go ahead, Susan. Susan Harmon, hawkfanatic.com. Do they remind you a little bit of your, of your team and the things they want to do, the transition, the threes? Um, I hadn't really thought about that, Susan. I, I feel like, um, you know, their, their offensive style is a little bit different than us as far as what they like to do out of their sets um, and out of their offense. And so I feel like that's a little bit different. But um, I hope that we're as disciplined as they are because I think they're a very disciplined team. Further questions? Go ahead, Susan. <clears throat> Um, what, what do you expect them to do defensively? Uh, they, it looked like they were in mostly a man yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't play much zone at all. Um, I, we haven't really seen any, and so we have seen them only play player-to-player -player defense. And according to Synergy, they play player-to-player -player defense 98.9% .9 of the time. Go ahead, Jeff. Jeff Linder, Sea Rapids Gazette. And I, I apologize if this has already been asked. Um, can you tell us a little bit about the big showdown with the gray team last Thursday, how that went down? Oh, <laughs> gosh, you're testing my memory. Um, I heard it was a two-point win. Okay, there you go. That's what I, easy come, easy go, right? I mean, to me, you know, it was really just about executing, about staying sharp with officials, timing, you know, the scoreboard, everything like that going as a game-like as possible. When you have a two-week break, you know, you just don't want to get rusty. And so that's why we brought the officials in and kind of had a scrimmage. Um, but, yeah, I kind of even forgotten about that, Jeff. <clears throat> Steve, go ahead. Thank you. Coach, um, you know, when you have possible games uh, every other day during this weekend, does that change the way you rotate your players in at all? In other words, are you going to try to make sure you get enough rest? Um, or is the day off in between enough to not worry about that? Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that too much because the, the ultimate goal is to win the game. And whatever we have to do to win the game is what we're going to do. Susan, did you have another follow-up? Yeah, you know, no? It's gone. Okay. <laughs> I Jeff. relate, Susan. Please identify yourself again, too. For uh, Jeff Linder, video. again, Cedar Rapids Gazette. And I'm sorry, again, if this has been asked, and it probably has. Uh, any update on Molly? Um, just, I haven't seen her today, and doubtful for Saturday. I keep trying to remember what day of the week it is. Um, but, you know, I mean, hoping we'll get something Monday, if we get there. Susan, Susan Harmon, hawkfanatic.com. Just... Uh, in, in terms of rust, um, what other things you have a scrimmage? Uh, you first, first you you let them rest, then you mm -hmm. have a scrimmage. How else have you spent this time? I mean, do you have rigorous practices? Is there anything you can do to sort of keep them sharp? We did a lot of like um, review, um, basically like reviewing all of our sets, our out of bounds plays, um, our press break, just did a lot of trying to brush up on everything, all of our fundamentals, um, working on ball screen defense, those type of things. So was it hard? I would say it was, um, we, we had a hard practice on Wednesday for this time of year. Um, and you know now it's kind of coasting a little bit for us. Any further questions? All Thanks, right. guys. Thank you, Coach. Good luck. Thank you. Our next press conference is at 1225 with players from West Virginia.